so hello, uh, I'm Ichaso. I'm going to talk about much more academic stuff, um, but I hope uh, you find it uh, enjoyable too. So I'm, um, I'm going to be talking about networks of clusters of innovation. And uh, to start with, I would like to, to remind you what a cluster is. I think everybody knows what is a, a cluster, but if we think, uh, we see that this picture, for example, it was taken in, in, in Detroit in one of those shows for automobile uh, industry. And as you know, Detroit has been uh, for many years the center of uh, production and manufacturing for, for cars. So in the early 90s, many uh, companies uh, working in the automobile industry were based there. And it was not a coincidence. So they, they based there because Detroit was traditionally a place where machinery industry uh, was uh, big. So the employees or the workforce were, were prepared to work in the automobile industry. Uh, there were uh, good channels uh, through, the, through ship, ships and, uh, and roads. And there was also good access to primary resources like um, iron or coal. So it was uh, in the early 90s when Ford uh, was uh, set up in Detroit and 100, more than 100 other companies in the same industry were collocated in the same area. And as you know, a cluster is known for being an agglomeration of companies which are uh, working in the same industry. So they share the same providers, the same um, uh, distribution channels, and in, in that way they reduce the transaction cost. So um, this has been for many years a way to understand the agglomeration of companies around the world. A couple of years ago, uh, I was uh, discussing this idea with a professor at uh, UC Berkeley called uh, Jerry Engel, where I was working on my PhD uh, research. And uh, we, our, our feel was that this definition of cluster was failing to understand how other clusters around the world operate. For example, how do we understand that a cluster like Silicon Valley, where computers, the internet, and semiconductors have been leading, uh, how can we understand that other industries such as Biodrug or cleantech are attracting uh, big investments and, and, and venture capital? And even more important for the case of Greece, how, how is that um, countries like Israel or Taiwan or, or the area of Bangalore in India are emerging and growing fast and getting connected to other clusters around the world? So it is not much more about collocation, but it is more of a global vision of, uh, of these industries. So uh, at that point, it was uh, maybe five years ago, we started uh, analyzing several ecosystems uh, around the world. And uh, we defined and uh, we published a couple of articles in the California Management Review, as well as the Business Horizons, about the clusters of innovation. And we tried to understand what makes a cluster different from a cluster of innovation? What are the differences? And we identified key different, three key different elements or dynamics. And I call them dynamics because we didn't uh, focus on ingredients. So we, we knew that there were universities in both of them. We knew that there was a government. We knew that they were big corporates. But what are the dynamics that create and generate this innovation and the flow of, of knowledge and, 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 and the growth um, of those environments. And the first dynamic uh, we identified, it is about mobility of resources. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So imagine uh, people and an environment like Silicon Valley. In Silicon Valley, people work today for a corporate. They identified an opportunity in the market. And as we were seeing right now, you quit your big corporate and you start a new company. You sell the company in a couple of years and you, can, um, you become an investor. So mobility of people, it's, it's big. People also change from one position to another one in different startups and big corporates. And that generates a big transfer of knowledge. And, and that is what generates, generates innovation. 
There is also mobility of capital. So in an environment like Silicon Valley, which is what we define as a cluster of innovation, capital is invested and reinvested. So today an investor uh, is investing in this company, that company is acquired, and the benefits of the profits are reinvested. And many of those entrepreneurs, in fact, become angels or the super angels that, that, we, uh, that they are called uh, now. And there is also mobility of technology. So technology is not tied to a company, but it is, uh, it, it is uh, developed in a small uh, startups and is acquired by big corporates. And uh, there is always the, the transformation of technology and the collaboration among them. So that is the first dynamic that we identified that makes a cluster to become a cluster of innovation. The second dynamic is entrepreneurship. And you are going to say, yeah, that's, that's clear. I mean, everybody knows that that cluster of innovation do have uh, many entrepreneurs and it's based on, on entrepreneurial uh, behaviors. But what is interesting is that previously we said that a cluster is focused on an industry. In a cluster of innovation, individuals and companies are focused on a stage of development and that is the early stage of development. So they are specialized on building new products and commercializing them. And that, that uh, makes them create uh, shorter cycles of innovation. So uh, the, the culture of entrepreneurial endeavor and, uh, and, and uh, the, the ecosystem which supports and participates in it, it's, uh, it's what drives the clusters of innovation. And finally, the third dynamic is about alignment of incentives. And this is very important in terms, for example, of investment, uh, when all the stakeholders in the market are aligned and all of them have the same goals uh, for developing their, the, the companies. So, um, so yeah, all of them are looking forward to create short, short cycles and, and recycle that. So, as we said, a cluster is different from a cluster of innovation in the mobility of resources, in the entrepreneurial uh, culture, and the alignment of incentives. Now, why is uh, this important for a country like Greece? So, it is important because this mobility of resources do not stay locally, it goes global. And that's what is happening between the connections uh, uh, with Israel and Silicon Valley, for example. So uh, companies in a cluster of innovation look globally and look for the, for the best resources and the expertise globally to uh, collaborate with. And that builds opportunities for many countries to get in those, what we call, the networks of clusters of innovation. So clusters are not any more localized. So digital platforms have helped uh, companies in different clusters to collaborate with each other and to build connections between the, the companies in the different clusters. So the connections can be three types of connections. It can be weak ties, and those weak ties are the ones that you build when you travel once to Italy or to Berlin or to London, and you go to a conference, you create relationships with other entrepreneurs, and you are connected on LinkedIn, and those are the weak ties. You have a lot of them. They don't take too much effort from you to, to maintain, but they can bring you some advantage and some benefits uh, at certain point. They might be durable bonds in such a way that when those weak connections become more established relationships and you sign a contract with somebody and those are uh, longer in, in, in the time. Or they can be covalent bonds and those are, for example, if you think of a company in the Valley or uh, which is connected with a company in Israel, Israel, uh, the, the technology team is in Israel and they have the management team, the business people in the Valley and as you were saying here, you have part of the team in Greece still and part of the team, the business side of the, of the team is in New York and that is because, again, born global companies look for international expertise 
to, to grow. So why is that important for you guys, uh, being in Greece? Uh, that is, it is important because now um, you know that entrepreneurship is a process, and it's a process which happens in the early stages of development of the companies. So it is about uh, all these lean startup uh, process that we are uh, hearing all the time, it is true. And it's, it is about testing, trying new things, and, um, and, and, and looking to specialize in these early stages of development. It is important for you too, because as, as we talked here, uh, those, those companies uh, around the world look for collaborations, and they don't look for collaboration locally. They look for collaborations globally. So that is a great opportunity for you to find uh, companies to partner with and to work with. And the third benefit for you is because right now there is no country which should be looking to become the next Silicon Valley. Right now, the network of clusters of innovations are based on uh, complementary uh, skills and assets. So it is an opportunity for you to identify what are the strengths of uh, Greece as a country and what are the skills and assets that you can be big uh, in and that you can uh, contribute to the uh, global uh, clusters of network of innovation. Thank you.